welcome back to Box Delights, and welcome to another solitaire gaming session. This one is Tannheiser. This is one I've been looking to do for quite well, some time, so um, I'm happy to finally get the opportunity to put this one down on the table and show you. It is out of print, so if you like the look of it after watching the film, go and pick it up as soon as you can. I've got the revised printing. This one has uh, some some little bugs fixed in the, in the rules, but. Pick it up now, it's, it might be your last chance. Uh, the solar variant I'm going to show you comes with the Daedalus Mapix supplement, but once you've got the rules down, the truth is that you can play this with the base set. All the figures come pre-painted, we'll have a, a quick look at what comes in the base game in, in just a moment. You get a great looking game board, it's huge, we're going to have it all set up in a moment. It's got this wonderful system that they've, um, they've called the pathfinding system, and it's one of these things that, it's a miniatures game without all that stress of, you know, am I in range, am I in line of sight, and all that kind of business, okay? It's, uh, it's miniatures gaming for board gamers, which, yeah, is what you've been waiting for. We'll, uh, we'll get set up and we'll show you how that works in a moment. Here's your base game. There's, there's, there's two, two teams. Here's all their cards. So you get two teams to, to play with. It's normally a two-player game, right? Nice rule book. There were also some uh, equipment cards that kind of acted as, as nice um, reference cards. But this printing, I don't know if it did on the others, but it comes with these two reference cards anyway. So you don't really need those very hard to find now equipment cards. The rule book's fabulous, and it's got rules for not just the stuff included in the base game, but also stuff that comes as expansions, so it's going to whet your appetite. If you grab this and you start reading through, you're going to find characters you don't have and you don't want to have, all right? So you'll have to go and find them while you still can. This one is a fantasy flight game, and it's in their kind of Eldritch Horror, Arkham Horror kind of series. Uh, but this one's set in 1949, and yeah, you've got some crazy, crazy kind of Axis allies type teams going on. If you are interested in picking this up for two-player, inside the rulebook, they do have a little graphic here showing you some of the expansions that can play. Um, there's different modes. There's six modes of play for the two-player. There's this deathmatch, capture the flag, domination, king of the hill, objective, and a story mode. And whichever mode you decide determines how the game is going to be set up and, and what you must do to win. So there's quite a lot of gaming here. I'm going to show you how to play. You don't need the, the uh, supplement. I'm going to teach you how to play the game Solitaire. All you need is the base game, which comes with everything you're going to need. Well, almost anyway. You're actually going to need these trooper tokens, 12 trooper tokens. But these these could be substituted in for any unused faction tokens, like these, for example. Just just grab 12 unused tokens that you're not you're not using, right? So um, yeah, the Daedalus map expansion comes with these 12 troopers. These represent the security force that's patrolling this castle. The map in here shows you where to start them off. I'm going to show you. We're going to start with one down in this spot. One up here. One here in this doorway. One just uh, here. One spot over. Now up in the top left, we got one here and one here in the middle. Top right, one up here, one on the stairway. And then down in bottom right, we have one over here and then one here. That's ten. Okay, we don't need the extra two. The mode we're going to be playing in is something called objective mode, which is described in the core rules. And since we're playing objective mode, we need some objective tokens. And which set we take depends on whether we decide to play the Union faction or the Reich faction. Let's, um, let's, let's be the good guys and play the Union. What we have to do now is place each of these objectives on the map. There's, there's two icons on here, on, on these tokens here. There's a larger icon and a smaller one. These are called the primary objective tokens, these gold ones. These silver ones are secondary and they only have one icon on. Uh, we place them on the board and we decide where to place them and you'll notice that like here, for example, with these little footprints, there's the smaller icon is different on each of these. But the icon must match 
one of these icons on the board. So here is a spot, and it's gold, where we can place a primary objective with the matching icon. So we can choose to place this one, and we place it face down here. Similarly, we'll do the rest for, for these. So here we've got a spanner, we can place this one here. We have a secondary one up here, that's a, a spanner. And with some ammo up here, here we have an engineering objective. And then down in the, the bottom right we have another sneak, this time a secondary. Okay, these footprints are sneak. Okay, that should give us a good mix of skills. The rest, go back to the box, you're not going to need those. And that's given us six on the board. And you, so you can see that, you know, you can, you can kind of mix these up how you want. Now in a player versus player, you'd be placing three each. Solitaire, we've placed all six ourselves. We've got to control all six of those objectives. Next job is to get our strike force together. So it's going to be two guys. We're not using the right, so we'll put those aside. And we're going to use two of these. I've got Tyler Pony and John McNeil. So I'll grab their respective miniatures. And then we need to set our characters up. We do this first by grabbing some equipment tokens. There's different tokens for each player. So let's have a look at Tala first. The way to do this is to go and choose an equipment pack. Each character has a page in the rulebook, and each character has either a combat pack, a stamina pack, or a command pack. So depending on which pack you choose, it dictates which tokens you get, and you also get a special object here as well. In the rulebook, it'll have all the packs for the characters who come as uh, expansions as well. So everyone's in there in this single book. Tyler's special is some TNT. Lovely job. And I think we're going to give her the combat pack. So she gets an M3 submachine gun. An M15 smoke grenade. Might be useful. And some extra ammo. These go to one side. Daniel Brown might have been good with his uh, with his knife and his uh, frag frag grenade. Anyway, we're playing John McNeil, and uh, he's got quite a lot of stripes, uh, some badges, some badges of honour that allow him to kind of skill up. Well, I've decided to give John the stamina pack, so we get a flash gun, we get an expert infantry badge. Medal of Honor, and our special is Night Eyes. This night Vision helmet. The other thing each player needs is a health indicator token. These are going to start at the the top level health, or at full health. And we do this by placing these tokens like so. With this star dialed in to the top level. So as we lose health, this kind of rotates, this dials down and points at which row. If I've got one criticism it's this this dialed in thing because it's easy to get knocked and you've only got to move it a fraction to, to change health but hey there we go that's uh, that's how they chose to do it. The final bit of setup is command points and then we're ready to play. There's three sets of uh, command point tokens. This first set here comes with the crates. Just pull out, there's a whole bunch of other crates with other magical gifts that you can you can find. Um, we can put the, the crate the command tokens for the right to one side because we're playing union. We're going to need these just to record how many command points this is what we're going to use to instruct our our strike force with. We're going to need these. The rest we're going to shuffle. Now I don't think you're supposed to be using these playing solitaire, but it's not going to hurt. <laughs> so let's uh, let's make things a little bit easier for us. Um, they are used in objective mode, so I don't suppose it's so bad. Um, these have got to go in these action points on the map. There's one here, this kind of twisty arrow. So we're just going to pick one at random and place it here. There's only one other action circle, and that's up here. So let's place it here. The rest is to one side. Let's get cracking with turn one. We start our turn by taking three action points. There's three action points per turn in this mission. Different scenarios have different numbers of action points. 
Now we're going to activate our heroes, and we're going to decide who we're going to activate first. Well, let's stick uh, let's stick John in first. He can head on. There's two entry points, and we can use either one. There's one here through the smashed back door, or there's one over here up through the cellar. John has seven movement points, as indicated by the fact that he's at full health. This this boot icon here. Moving into an entry point takes one movement point. Then moving onto each of these circles is one more. One, so that's two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now that's a bit boring, huh? <laughs> Just moving um, stealthily. And the, the, there's a problem here too, because this guy here, this, this, um, this guard, he's doing his rounds. But what's important is at the end of the turn, every one of these guys is going to move, and they're going to keep, they're going to move on their patrol. They're going to move three spots, one, two, three. This guy's going to move this way, and the route they move is dictated by this map. And this is the thing that you need, okay, um, in order to to plot where where the people are going to go. Now you can make up your own for each map, right? Just pick a route, pick a little sequence, figure out a map, a little patrol route for each guy. This guy is going to head this way. And this is one of the key points about this pathway system. Does this guy have line of sight on me? Right, it's partially covered by a door. You know, is it in range and so on and so on? Hey, all those problems, they disappear with Tannhauser. Look at the colour of the circles. We're in a purple circle. This guy is in a circle and it's purple and green. If any colours shared, then we're on the same path. We're considered to be on the same path and that means we're fair game for targeting each other. And that means this guy is going to attack me. All right. Let's put him back and think about what we really want to do. As we came in, we used one movement point. Any point during your movement, you can take an action. So you can move, act, move. You can act, move, act, move, act. You know, there's no, no limit there. So as we come in the door, why don't we unleash this submachine gun on this guy? I think he's here, actually. As it goes, attacking is pretty easy. Okay, so we're going to use... Our flash gun, declare our weapon, declare our target. We're on the same path, I'm on a green path, this guy's on a green and blue, I'm on a green and blue, right? So we share a path. We're not adjacent, so we need to have a ranged weapon. That's any weapon that has a trait, pistol, automatic, or <laughs> mental. Remember, we got our crib sheet, and it tells us that our flash gun is a weapon and it's automatic. All right. It also tells us when, atta uh, when attacking with his weapon, if you roll at least one natural 10, uh, we roll two additional dice and then add the results to the attack roll. And you can use this ability once per attack. Okay. Now we don't have to use a weapon, we could go in hand to hand, but um, the weapon trait for hand uh, no weapon at all is two dice. For everything else, it's four. If we have an automatic weapon, we get five dice. The game comes with two, so I'm going to have to go and grab some extra dice. Let's give him a roll. We've got a 1, a 10, a 3, a 3, and a 2. To determine whether a roll is a success or not, I need to look at my combat rating. My combat rating right now is 6. It's the, the, this value here on the top line, okay? because that's what my health is. And to know which number to roll, I take 10 minus my rating. 10 minus 6 is 4. I need to roll at least a 4 to have a success. So you can see I've only got one success here, right? But the good news is it's a natural 10. On these dice, a zero is a 10, in case you're wondering. Because of my flash gun's ability, it said if I roll a natural 10, I get to add two dice to my roll. And I got two more successes, that's three successes. I got three rolls of higher than 10 minus six, four. Three rolls high and four. Now normally a defending character would roll what's called a shock roll at this point. They'd get a chance to cancel some of these attacks. So we can see that happening when these guys attack us because we get to roll what's called shock rolls. But these troopers, they soak up that damage. This guy is out of here. And it's good I took him out because one, two, three. Remember he moves three at the end of the turn. If he ends on the same path as me, because I'm going to continue my movement now. One, two, three, four, five, six seven, then he would get an automatic, we don't roll the dice, automatic four successes against 
this hero, we would get our shock roll still. The bad news is, because we were firing off a loud weapon, that means all troopers, in response, will have to move three spaces. Okay, they get an advanced movement. I'm going to turn all these tokens over so I remember who's moved and who hasn't. So this guy here moves three on his route. One, two, three. This guy moves three on his route. One, two, uh, one, two, three. Of course, if I turn them over as I move them, that will keep me keep me in line. This guy moves three. One, two, three. This guy is in the wrong spot. He should be here. He's going to move three. One, two, three. Now a couple more down here. This guy is patrolling this way. So yeah, up into that goes up into this hallway. One, two, three. This one is heading this direction. One, two, three. Got one over here. One, two. Yep, he heads into this doorway. And then finally, these two up here. The guy on the stairs moves down into this room. One, two, three. And this guy moves around this way. One, two, three. All right, so you can see that this map is quite easy and quick to follow. It's not that tricky. The good news is this guy up here, he's on an orange-gray circle. We're back here in this purple one. He doesn't end his movement on the same path as me, so there's no attack firing off there. Before we move on to Tyler's activation, I want to talk about these command points as well. You can do various things with these command points. We've got three at our disposal. They allow you to do stuff like boosting your characteristic values, shaking off a wound. The thing we're going to do is buy movement points. You can buy one movement point for one command point. So we can spend one and move it here, and then spend one more. Uh, Move this guy one extra spot here. We're now ready to have a, have a look at this objective point on our next turn, I think. The other thing you can do with command points is you can put a hero on Overwatch. And what Overwatch means is you can't activate, you spend the point, you kind of uh, enter a defensive stance. And what that means is that you can actually react to an enemy's movement. So if they move during their movement onto the same path as you, then you can attack them. And now that the way is clear for, for Tala, uh, we're going to have her come in, and I think, yeah, the coast is kind of clear a little bit down here now. This guard has moved up around here, so it might be an opportunity to, to try and duck in here if we can. The downside is that we've got some um, difficult terrain to get through. We've got to step over these broken shards. So she's going to come in here. This is one movement point. This is going to cost me two uh, her to move through. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven. We could even... Yeah, let's duck in here. Let's duck in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And why don't we use this extra command? Yeah, let's, let's go in here. Eight. Let's move, uh, let's move John back, let's save a command point, not move John so far, we'll move Tyler one more point. And now that we're adjacent to this token, we can flip it face up, doesn't cost an action. Now we can attempt to complete this objective, okay, using our action, and we've got one action per turn. What's important here is our skill icons. A primary objective like this one has two halves. The larger icon here is sneak, and the lower, the smaller one here, is strategy. If we have the same skill on our character card as the higher one, then we automatically complete the objective as our action, job done. Okay. And if you're playing multiplayer, you put a flag on here, and you try and get four of your flags. Here's a union flag. You try and get four of these flags to win the win the game. But if you don't have the higher skill, but you do have the lower skill, then what happens here is that you take one of your unused equipment tokens of your character and you place it next to it to say to show that you have halfway completed it. 
Okay, you've halfway completed it, and then the, the second half has to be completed with a second action. And because you don't have a skill, if you don't have a skill, you've got to make a, a, a test. You've got to roll a die. I'm rolling a die because you've got to roll a six or higher. I think it is. As it goes, Tala does have the sneak skill, so she will automatically complete this objective in full as her action. That's one down, five to go, and we don't need to use the flags because we're playing solitaire, so we just remove this for the board, we just collect this one. Now that both our characters have activated, we've ended our turn, all these troopers, these security forces are going to move again, they're going to move their three spaces upon their tracks. And that's everybody moved, and what's easy about this now is because of the colours of this pathway system, you can see quickly at a glance who is in line of sight with who. Nobody. So we did a good job. I'm going to give you one more turn, just to show you once more how things go. So we get our three command points back at the beginning of the turn. We can choose to activate, we can go on Overwatch. But obviously we're going to uh, have this guy move in here. That's one movement point. We're going to have a look at this objective. It is a mechanics one. And neither of our characters have the mechanics skill. So it's going to be a die roll. It also means that even if we're successful with our die roll, we're only going to complete half the objective. Remember, each objective is of two halves. So we've got to roll the die to get half successful, and then we're going to have to wait another turn, make another check to complete the second half of the objective. And we were unlucky, it's a four. And the bad news is we can't even try and improve that with command points or anything. Okay, let's do, let's do Tala. So what we're going to do is we're going to move one, two, three, four, five. This is slow terrain. What have we got? Some steps to go up. Six, seven. I'm standing next to this crate. I'm going to use the three command points to get me here. One, two, three. And Tyler's going to pick up her smoke grenade. And she's going to toss it from here. Now the important thing here is that the range is 8 for a grenade to start us off, um, and it's got to stay on the path, but here's the thing, alright, so let's go, we've got yellow, orange, so I can go, um, you don't count the circle you start from, 1, 2, alright, so we're still on the yellow path, now the last circle does not have to be on the path, okay, so I could go one more, and this is kind of like the grenade pinging off the wall or something, right, so I've thrown it, bang, and it's, 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 trickled in here. I can't carry on. Okay, it's only that last circle that could not be on the path. Every circle in between has to be on the path. Alright, so it's pretty simple. Just throw it and it can bounce that last one if it's still within eight range. Now this smoke grenade is going to last three turns. Alright, so to denote this we're going to add two smoke tokens and in the next turn we'll move one, the turn after we'll move one, and then in the next turn, at the start of that turn, we'll remove the smoke grenade, so for that turn, there'll be no more smoke, right? So that's our three turns. Do you know what, I forgot a step for the start of the turn as well. At the start of every turn, any defeated uh, troopers, so they're only defeated for that turn, they're going to get respawned, okay? So reinforcements are arriving, and they reappear on the yellow arrow spot that they, they started on. So this guy, yeah, we're going to get a new tree that arrived here for the start of his turn. It didn't affect anything for that turn. There's always something you forget when you're, when you're filming these shows. So what does the smoke grenade do? All circles that share a path with this circle are filled with smoke. That means all the purple ones, right? So this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, they're all filled with smoke. This area here on this stairwell. Any character sitting on a, on a circle filled with smoke can only attack adjacent enemies. Now these smoke grenades aren't so effective solitaire because the other rule is that you roll two fewer dice, but of course these guys don't roll dice to attack. Their attacks are automatically successful. And also this guy's going to move one, two, three um, into this area here. So I'm going to suggest a couple of changes. I mean, feel free, they're your rules, but I mean, in the, in the normal solo rules that are published, it says that these, these troopers aren't affected by, uh, by movement restrictions. Maybe it's because of these goggles he's wearing. Who knows? Anyway, I like the fact that um, we've got this smoke, so I think I'm just going to say that you know, if, you, if you use the smoke, then the trooper's going to be struggling to move around in the smoke. 
let's reduce his movement from three down to just two. Okay, one, two, which puts him here, and now he's in a purple. All right. So play with the rules a little bit. They're not perfect. Um, they're pretty basic as it goes. So that's how you play the Tannhauser solitaire rules. I hope you enjoyed this little demonstration, and it does give you a few little options with, with playing with this game. But the other thing to say is do go and pick it up if you want to find yourself a nice two-player miniatures game for board gamers because this pathfinding system is just, just, just beautiful. It's, it's made for us, alright? That's Tannhauser from Fantasy Flight Games. See you next time.